It's been a few weeks since we made a video about the new horror games that you guys should give a try. And I really can't believe that October is about to end already. And we still didn't make a list of its best releases. I mean, it doesn't make sense to let the month of horror pass by without at least giving you some suggestions to play in the upcoming chilling nights or even in the next few weeks of the year. The good news is that there are actually quite interesting games that have come out earlier this month and even more amazing ones that will be released in the next few days. Some of them are third-person experiences that we were eagerly waiting for, and others are creative indie titles that definitely deserve to be mentioned. One of the titles that I was very excited about this month was Alone in the Dark, but sadly, it got delayed to January 2024, which means that we need to wait a couple more months to get our hands on it and remember the good old days that we had with this iconic franchise. Anyway, let's not waste any more time on the intro, and let's just start the countdown. The name of this game alone is enough to make us take it seriously, because even though it says don't scream, it's obvious that it was designed to make our screams wake up all the neighbors when we play it at night. This newfound footage game has a unique feature that makes it stand out from its peers, and that feature is using your microphone to literally detect your screams. This means that if you scream in real life, the game will restart from the beginning and you'll lose. Even though it's a cool mechanic that makes the experience more immersive and realistic, it also makes things way harder, especially if you're someone who's easy to scare and needs to be very mindful of their own reactions. According to the developers, the game is short, and it's about 18 minutes long, because if it gets any longer, no one will probably be able to ever finish it without screaming, even by accident. And there's another catch in the game, which is the fact that time advances solely in tandem with your movement and the scares remain unpredictable, which basically means that you can never know when the scares will occur or when to take a break. And to enhance the challenge even further, the game requires you to adjust your microphone calibration, ensuring that even the lowest noise or sudden jump is recognized as a scream, especially since every playthrough promises a distinctive encounter with numerous dynamic scares to keep you engaged. So I'm definitely keeping an eye on this one as it releases on October 27th, and I think that it's worth keeping on your wish list if you have the courage to accept the challenge. People with heart problems should probably avoid it. by some entities. Jack. Jack. Fears of Fathom is a title that all horror fans are definitely familiar with, and it's known for being a series of episodes that tell short psychological horror stories about actual people who lived in the real world and managed to survive terrifying incidents. We don't know for sure if it's actually true, but we will take their word for it. Anyway, in Ironbark Lookout, you take on the role of Jack Nelson, a 24-year-old fire lookout who is transferred to a new outpost in Ironbark State Park, but as he settles into his new home, he begins to experience strange and disturbing phenomena. He eventually realizes that the park is haunted by a dark and mysterious presence and that he's probably doomed if he doesn't get the heck out of the park. But as usual, it's never as simple as it seems. Jack must use his wit and cunning to survive the horrors of Ironbark State Park and uncover the secrets of the haunting, but he also needs to explore the park's dense forests and abandoned buildings, solve puzzles, and make difficult choices that will determine the fate of the story. Furthermore, the game has some immersive features like receiving texts from other characters and monitoring your voice activity because your microphone can get you in trouble here just like in the previous episodes. Anyway, the game came out on October 20th, and you can try it for yourself right now, but it's better to play it at night 
to get the best of its spookiness. In the year of 1970, a chill gripped northern Quebec, Canada. A chill that echoed not from the seasonal blizzard, but from the mystery buried deep. Some blamed it on the mines. Others thought it was something far more sinister. But all called it the broom. Lives once filled with routine and stability changed. The icy wilderness and the creatures within it changed. Everything that once was changed. I discovered this game recently, and I feel that it's an anonymous title that no one heard about or even knew that it came out last week. It's a first-person horror adventure game that tells the story of Carl Faber, a detective who is investigating a bizarre mist that has engulfed a remote mining village in Canada in 1970. The mist is causing the villagers to experience strange and disturbing hallucinations, and this is why Carl finds himself compelled to find out the source of the mist and stop it before it's too late. The experience is slow-paced and emphasizes atmosphere and suspense over jump scares, aside from the fact that it features a large and open world to explore, and you are free to investigate the mist in your own style. The game also has a variety of puzzles to solve and choices to make that will affect the story's outcome, which means that you need to be careful with your actions because everything you do has consequences. So if you're a fan of exploration and investigating a large environment that's full of clues and hints that require you to be smart, then you should probably give this game a try because it really looks very underrated. His conversation with Jules Demers had convinced him of the dangers of exposing himself to this smoke. I want to go home. There's no way I would miss adding this game to the list because I really fell in love with its style from the first second I saw it. And I think that you guys must know about it too. One Way Home follows a 12-year-old boy named Jimmy who is left alone in his hometown of Bleckridge at the very beginning of some sort of apocalypse. Jimmy must use his courage and ingenuity to overcome all the difficulties and return home to his mom. And your job is to help him achieve this simple but sophisticated goal at the same time because the environment is more dire than it seems. The game is designed to test the player's survival skills and emotional strength as they face a variety of puzzles to solve, enemies to fight, and secrets to discover. One of the unique things about One Way Home is that it is set in a world that is both familiar and strange simultaneously because Bleckridge is a normal, peaceful town that has been turned upside down by the apocalypse. You have to explore the town's abandoned streets and buildings, but you need to do so while avoiding the dangers that lurk around every corner. But the most special thing about One Way Home is obviously its art style, as it features hand-drawn graphics that give it a unique and atmospheric look. The characters and environments are all beautifully detailed, and the game's overall presentation is truly impressive. And this is why I made sure to add it to the list so you guys know about it in case you haven't already. 
The official release date is not yet revealed, but I advise you to play the free demo as long as it is available because you don't know when you will lose this chance. I talked about this one before when I made a video about the best upcoming Asian horror games, and it really felt like an interesting experience that deserves to be shed light on. Hollow Cocoon is set in 1980s Japan and allows you to play as a man named Minato Jinba, a college student who returns to his mother's hometown after receiving news that his grandmother is not doing very well and her health condition is very, very critical. But apparently his grandmother is not the only one who's not doing well because the entire town is actually being terrorized by a mysterious creature and the protagonist must hide from the creature and gather vital evidence to learn the truth about what's happening. It's also important to note that the game has multiple endings and recreated environments that will make your mission harder and more challenging than anything you were ready for. The official release date is December 7th, but the good news is that there's a free demo that you can play right now to see if this game is worth buying in December or if its quality is not actually worth it. Found footage games are one of the best ingredients for spooky horror nights, and I had to add as many as I could to this list, so you guys get many different options to choose from. And one of those options is Teleform. It's a found footage styled horror game where you play as a journalist visiting the apartment of a man named Walter Martins, who is a reporter who died during the broadcast of his TV program called Teleform. The protagonist is there to interview Martin's widow and gather information about his death. But of course things go sideways, and he realizes that there is more to the story than meets the eye. Your main objective is to explore the apartment and try to discover the secrets behind Martin's death. But we all know that the apartment in such games is always haunted, and that's why you need to get ready to encounter strange paranormal activities along the way. The game also has multiple endings that allow for multiple conclusions about the terrifying story of the reporter and the mysterious personality of his wife. If you think what you heard is good enough for your horror gaming standards, then keep in mind that this game is already available, and you can try it today to learn more about its dark backstory. Caros telespectadores, boa noite. Hoje nós teremos uma transmissão especial do nosso programa. Possivelmente a minha última. E com ela trago um comunicado a fazer para todos vocês. Descobri algo nas últimas semanas que tem tem me assombrado desde então. Palavras não serão o bastante para descrever o que descobri. Portanto, eu vou precisar mostrar. E talvez isso venha a assombrar vocês, assim como tem me assombrado. Mas a minha profissão, o meu trabalho, foi revelar a verdade durante todos esses anos. Eu tenho que sair daqui. Você é meu. 
Even if I die, never get away from you. This is another memorable Asian game that many of you might already be familiar with from its original installment, which caught a considerable amount of attention in 2022. The Bridge Curse 2 The Extrication is a new first person survival horror game a standalone sequel to The Bridge Curse Road to Salvation, and also a reimagined adaptation of the Taiwanese film The Bridge Curse to Ritual. You will find yourself at Wenhua University, which is known for its unsettling ghost stories, but the cool thing is that you can control four students during a special event in the university called Carnival of Horror. As the night goes on, the students find themselves trapped in a deadly curse and must work together to escape, but apparently there are many people who are not trustworthy here, and you need to be careful about your surroundings. What the? Let the elevator go! The main objective of the characters is to recreate an eerie incident that occurred on campus many years ago and transform it into a horror film. However, as they hurriedly begin filming during the late hours of the night, peculiar occurrences begin to unfold, and it seems that the tragic incident that happened to a girl at the university is still echoing in the place, and the girl's soul never left. A student at Wenhua University, the last images we have of Huang Tingting are in the elevator of the school's Daoren building. The surveillance footage shows her making some bizarre movements, and soon after, she disappears into thin air. The police released the footage imploring the public for help, but it yielded no results. That was 15 years ago to this day. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel that the story of this girl in this game was somehow inspired by the incident of Elisa Lam, who was a Chinese-Canadian student who died mysteriously in 2013 after being recorded in one of the most disturbing elevator videos in recent history. Anyway, the location is also full of different types of demons and signs that relate to Taiwanese folklore, but you must bypass your fears to explore the environment and find items that you need to progress. If you're interested in all of this, then you're really lucky because there's a relatively long demo that you can play right now for free, so you can get a taste of what this experience has to offer when it finally releases. Stray Souls is a game that we mentioned multiple times on the channel, and rightfully so, because it's really one of the most interesting third-person projects that were revealed in the last couple of years. The setting here is the haunted town of Aspen Falls, and you take on the role of Daniel, who's an average, goofy teenager whose life is turned upside down when he inherits the home of his estranged grandmother on his 18th birthday, even though he never met her before. When Daniel arrives at Aspen Falls, he realizes that the town is plagued by a sinister curse and that he is now at the center of a dark ritual that threatens his very existence. However, Daniel is not alone, and he eventually meets a mysterious woman called Martha, who warns him that he is in danger and tells him that he must find a way to break the curse before it's too late. I know some things about your grandmother. Best I can piece it together, 
She was someone pretty high up in a secret society. Daniel begins to investigate the curse and the town's dark secrets. But as he does so, he discovers that his family has a long and complicated history with Aspen Falls and that the curse is somehow connected to his past. He also learns that he is not the only one who is in danger and that there are other people in Aspen Falls who are being targeted by the curse and he must find a way to save them as well. He must face a variety of gruesome enemies, epic bosses, and cunning puzzles to understand what the heck is happening around him but apparently the biggest threat in this whole town is his grandmother herself, who obviously had a very evil and vile history that manifested in the area after her death. Anyway, we will not wait long to find out because the game actually comes out on October 25th. And if you're watching this video right now, then it means that the game is already available for you to delve into its spooky world. myself so Alice could go free. Now, I'm trapped in the dark place. Alan? This nightmare has only just begun. Alan? Next on Alan Wake. I need to escape before I lose my mind. I need to write a new story. A hero to help me. The dark presence is out there, hunting me. Okay boys, there's no question that this is the big one on the list, and for some people it's a game that they were waiting more than a decade to play because they had so many memories with the original title back in 2010. Alan Wake 2 takes place 13 years after the events of the first game, which kind of makes things look realistic considering that it's been exactly 13 years since the first game's release. In this installment, Alan Wake has been stuck in the alternate nightmarish world known as the Dark Place, and he has been trying to escape for so long but without any success. Meanwhile, in the real world, a series of ritualistic murders have occurred in the town of Bright Falls, Washington, and an FBI agent named Saga Anderson is sent to investigate the killings and find out who's behind them. But things get really serious when Anderson discovers that the murders are connected to Alan Wake, and she also finds pages of a horror story that Wake has written. When she starts reading the story, she begins to experience the same nightmares that Wake has been having, and her life becomes somehow connected to his and the mess gets even deeper. It appears that Anderson is the key to Alan's escape, and he must write a new horror story that will involve Anderson and the Dark Place. If he can do this, he may be able to use the power of fiction to escape from the nightmare dimension, but if he can't, then both his fate and hers can be really tragic. The main point here is that the two stories of Alan Wake and Saga Anderson will intertwine as they both struggle to survive in the darkness, and that will allow you to have the chance to control both characters due to the gameplay. Alan Wake must write his way out, while Anderson must uncover the truth about the dark place and the forces that are controlling it, and both of them need to succeed in their mission to make it out of the nightmare. It's really an interesting plot, and I hope that the final product will live up to your expectations when it finally gets released on October 27th, which is today or yesterday, or the day after, depending on when the heck this video will get published. You told me yourself, from the dark place. Listen, Scratch is coming. He's, he's close. He's almost here. He's My daughter is dead because of you. She's a child. I'm trying to fix this. We'll fix this. I'll save everyone, but we're running out of time. I need the clicker. Don't fucking give it to him. He's a monster saga. There it is. We've been waiting for you, mother. I'm gonna destroy you. Yeah. 
this is it for today, guys. And I'm really sorry for the lack of content in the last couple of weeks. And I hope that we can make it up for you from now on. This month has been so busy and I had a lot of stuff that I had to keep up with. And sadly, I couldn't set the schedule right to make things work. I even made this video days ago, but every day I forget to finish it and upload it and end up postponing it to the next day. Anyway, hopefully this video provided you with some good suggestions to play, and also make sure to play the demos before they disappear from Steam and you lose an important chance of testing the game before buying it. Until next time, stay safe and keep the horror going.